Hey fellow content creators, welcome to my channel. This is the channel where we talk about anything and everything to do with filming or video. Um, ranging from the cameras to lights to tripods and anything in between. And today specifically we're going to talk about the gimbal and this gimbal, the DJI Ronin RSC2. So don't confuse the two. You get the RSC2, which is the one I'm going to talk about, and you get the bigger brother, which is the RS2. Um, this gimbal came out last year, 2020, and I only got my hands on it right now. So I'm going to talk. Um, okay, we'll start from the unboxing. I've already unboxed it, so I'll call it the unbaking again, same as the road video. So I'll take um, the stuff from the back, show what the combo comes with. And I'm going to talk about how does it look or, or how does it feel and what are the improvements between from um, the, the Mark 1 because I had two of the Mark 1s. I sold them so that I can get this combo. Then I'll talk about um, the Raven Eye and the Follow Focus mo uh, Moto, which comes with the combo. So let's get to it. It comes with a nice little bag. <clears throat> the bag is quite uh, compact, it's thicker, and because it has actually two compartments, so that's what makes it thicker. It, it, if you have used uh, Ronin before or the DJI product before, you'll know that you have to activate it via the app before you use it. Um, probably there is tons of uh, videos concerning that and also the booklet because it comes with, I think this is a waste of paper, it comes with all this. Um, <clears throat> so you can, you can go th through it, show how to, it, it will show how to activate it. This thicker one, it, it's actually a couple of pages that you're gonna go through, probably maybe seven, eight pages. The rest is just translation into other languages. The other ones is, this is for the, uh, for the Raven Eye. Then this is safety, disclaimer, and all that. And this is for the follow focus mode. And also it looks thick, but most of this is just a translation into other languages. And I'm not sure what is this also. And this is for the phone holder. So I think in my opinion, this is a waste of paper. Throw it there because most of the time, even some of the things when you look on, on, the, on, the, on the menu or manual, especially, when it comes to connecting cables, it's not that clear which port, what do you put on which port. So we normally go onto YouTube and then activate and then uh, watch the videos from there. So I'm going to take the stuff out of the box, out of the bag, just to show what it comes with. And the first thing you will see will be lots of cables. There's many more cables that are not here because this, these ones are the ones that I'm using. So it, even if you use, for example, this one, which is a, this is a, a mini U, um, HDMI cable to micro. And because I'm using um, Fujifilm and it uses micro, so I only have this. So you do get your micro to full and your mini to mini. And they all have a mini because this is for the Raven Eye. It uses the mini HDMI. So you get all sorts of cables. I'll throw them here. Um, you get your base plate. This is a new base plate. I like this base plate because from the previous Ronin SC, because this one is a Monfrotto, Monfrotto style uh, base plate. So I can easily take this from the gimbal and put it on my tripod without an issue. So I'm going to put it there. Um, with that, you actually get You get your riser, or you can also call it the base plate. On the previous one, it was just the riser. You get two of them. So this riser, <coughs> sorry, this riser, it goes onto your camera, and then it goes onto the main base plate. Okay. So 
this is where it goes it also allow you to just take the camera out just using um, the riser or this base plate or you can take the whole thing out so you get another riser and this one is specifically you'll see it has two m4 threads on the side on actually both sides so this is where you're going to mount your follow focus rod and i will show i will show that how it works and i'll also go into create a video solely um, for the follow focus mode how do you assemble it and how how do you set it up and use it so those are two <clears throat> so i might as well just follow with the follow focus motto what am i doing ah, anyway so this doesn't come assembled you get this part which goes onto either your base plate like that or you put it onto this riser or the the, the, the small base plate like i was saying and you get that and then you get the rod i think this is a 12 millimeter doesn't look like a 15 millimeter that you usually use it with your cage and then your motor comes on onto the rod so what i like about this motor is quite small and it actually works i've tested it it's quite nice so this is sort of your assembly i just put it like this onto the back so that i don't have to start from the beginning um going to put it here you also get your gear so this goes onto your lens you wrap it around your lens and then it's going to be driven by the motor the next thing is your lens support if you are using a longer lens you just need a support and you're going to put it right in front of your your base your main base plate and it can go up and down just to support your lens This bag has so many pockets. I will show you just after I am done taking out the stuff in here so that nothing falls. So you also get your phone holder, which is quite nice. I've put my phone. Um, the only thing that happened, I'm using this A31 Samsung. Um, if my phone is inside this pouch, it actually gets slippery here so if you don't mount it uh, securely or if you can do a sudden a sudden move you might actually your, your phone might actually fall so sorry so just be careful um you might have to just take your phone out of the out of the pouch okay the other things is your sc screws and three quarter or is it a third so it's just all the screws you're going to need to put on your um your focus motor you know all the support for the focus motor for the rod and also so there's a couple of them i've used two i've used two on here and i still have about three left of the m4s and you also get um those ones that goes onto your camera through your base plates so on here i've taken out almost everything okay there's still more still more so this is uh, probably for your lens support i'm not sure this looks like a mount but i try to look i'm not sure where it goes um I, i'll just have to look harder so that is that and yeah that's it so this is one compartment before things fall this is one compartment with all the pockets and you can store your stuff without an issue so we're going to go onto the main compartment this thing doesn't come as um i have presented them they are in plastics and all that nicely sealed so i've removed everything and i've packed stuff um the way i want them to be 
you get your normal tripod it's made out of plastic but for me this is robust enough i don't think anything will happen to to it it's quite robust um this is how it sits in here with some velcro thread there so that it's secure it doesn't move and you have another pocket on here so i'm going to take it out talk about okay you also get your you also get your allen key allen key whatever it is called it's for your screws So this is the main gimbal and on here you get your raven eye just i don't know why it's hard to take it out um it doesn't come like that mounted on there i just prefer to leave it there so this is your raven eye which is your wireless transmission system so you connect your you connect your hdmi and your R, I think it's RSS cable, you connect them to your gimbal and you go into a uh, feed wirelessly to your phone via the Ronin, um, DJI Ronin app. Uh, you can see a live feed from your camera onto your phone. And for me, it was good enough. It looked exactly like it was, the aspect ratio was fine. And it was, it was, it was sharp enough for me to see what's happening. Um, it has a good image all in all. So I will do a video concerning the Ronin I separately and the follow focus mode. So for now, the Raven Eye goes to where it stays. Okay, so this is the gimbal. This is how it comes. You cannot separate the battery pack or the handle like on the Mark 1. The Mark 1 you got the battery or the handle separately but on here you cannot do that and um, the reason for that is that you get your underslung which is that the way you see it you can shoot with it like that without having to add the extra um, components or parts. On the previous on the Mark 1 you had you had to put an extra arm and also had to get an extra tripod just to get the underslung mode and for me the, this is very good it's a brilliant idea but I, I had an issue of i will go and uh where is unlock okay it's unlocked so you just close that and you're supposed to to lock it here I've tested this gimbal and on two, three, four occasions, I forgot to actually lock it. And as soon as I start to work, it will move a little bit. Um, there is some resistance. It didn't move that much. But for me, it was a bit of an issue. It's something I'll have to get used to it that after closing it, I just have to lock it. So let's put on the tripod. Uh, I'm just going to talk about the improvements um, physically. There are nice improvements on this. This is nice. You can actually lock this. Even on the previous one, you could lock all the motors. And that helps you with, um, with actually um, stabilizing it or setting it up. So you can lock all the motors, leave the one that you are busy stabilizing and you won't have issues and it actually helps for quick installment um, i had a gimbal without without those um, locks and it was a bit of an issue so physically this gap has been improved um, maybe if i can put it that way this gap has been improved in relation to the mark one so the mark one even if you had a camera and a lens that was within the range of two kilograms which was on the mark one um, if your lens is longer you find that you cannot balance it because you couldn't move your camera um, further backwards that was an issue and they have also improved the kilograms here or the weight that it can take uh, the previous one was two kilograms this is three kilograms and now you can put your longer lenses and just to if you using fujifilm i have put a 90 mil here and i could balance it um 
for me it worked quite well i didn't do any um sort of um uh, creative moves so it was the normal uh, pen and tilt and it was working very well i'm going to do more tests i was actually working so i i didn't have to do those moves uh, i was working with shooting a wedding so that's how i tested it um the next thing is also that gap or that space there has been improved you actually get your three motions now let me just quickly put this unlock okay then lock it so on your left and right yeah, on your left and right you get the movement from your main arm you get your movement from the main base and you also get your movement from this base plate the small base plate so this have been improved if you have um, a bigger camera you are able to actually fit it in here without lots of issues so that's a nice plus for me um, overall i like the way they have added this wheel here the scroll oh okay sorry i'm having this the other way right the other way around they have added this wheel here and this wheel you can use it for a couple of things you can use it for your aperture your iso um i don't think you can use it for shutter speed so it's aperture iso you can use it for your follow focus mode so you can control the rotation of your follow focus uh, motor not mode motor um also you can actually do a manual uh, focusing using this and just using the cable connected onto the gimbal itself I, I have tested that method so it sort of works electronically you are going to focus manually using the electronics if that makes sense so you just connect the cable here connect it to your camera and you use you put your camera on manual focus mode and you use the wheel to ah, the wheel is here you use the wheel to scroll and focus i've tested this and i wasn't happy with it i'm not sure if maybe there is a um a firmware that i i have to update to or there will be a firmware in future i'm not sure but for me it didn't work well so by saying it didn't work well what's happening is i would focus and as soon as i stop the focus still moves and i think it was moving in one direction it was moving forward so at some point it was just it will focus there and stay there but sometimes as soon as i remove my finger from the wheel it will move so it might be because um, maybe the electronics are still sending a signal even though i have lifted my finger from the motor i don't know but it didn't work that later when i have added the follow focus motor it was working without an issue so this is a plus for me they've also added a i'm just going to take this mount um by the way while i'm taking it out this mount this is where you can mount your extra uh monitor and also this is where you you add your your phone holder so this is quite nice you have two ah what am i doing so you have you have two of uh, mounting places on both sides um, i believe on the rs2 which is the bigger brother which can take four and a half kilogram uh, you have a couple of mounting places so the other thing that they have added here is your click and scroll wheel so this is for your menu you just click to select and you can scroll to go through the menu which is quite nice um, they have added the uh, button here which is for your recording and you can also shoot photos um, they had it on the previous one but my fuji wasn't working later on the previous running on this um, a lot is supported on fuji so i'm quite happy and that's another reason i've actually went on to this that uh, i checked and they, they support it with lots of features 
um that's your mode that's where you will quickly cycle through your modes and those modes you can actually change them via the app how do you want those modes to be and by modes i'm talking about your 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 whether you're locking all the motors or you're leaving the pen to follow you can set all that on the app and the app is actually awesome i have zion we build as the app is crap but the gimbal is quite nice i still love that gimbal it's a, it's a tank so um that is that you have a small screen here um it's useful i'm using it i don't see any issue with it on rs2 the bigger brother the screen is quite big and the screen is also um touch sensitive so it's a touch screen on the rs2 not on here but i'm happy with this um let me see if i'm leaving anything here so is the build you cannot dismantle the battery and yeah i think i have actually talked about lots of things here so what i can add on here um, which is probably the last thing is it's easier to balance the motors here than the ronin sc mark one and i think it's simply because these motors um dji claim that they have increased them um, by 50 percent or this have 50 percent more power than the previous ones so the previous ones when you have to balance you had to be precise otherwise you had issues balancing it so this one i a bit forgiving forgiving they are not as much as forgiving as the one on the z we build s but they are a little bit forgiving and i can actually um uh, balance this gimbal quite faster so the, the one thing that i think i have missed before i close was that on let me just do this okay so the one thing i haven't talked um, a lot about is the app so on the app this is where you can actually see your live view from the raven eye um, you can also um sort of set up your gimbal um, change the modes uh, you can do other things like your time lapse um, i think you can actually even do it uh, on on the gimbal itself um, i don't want to confirm that um, the other things there are other parameters that you can change uh, for example the sensitivity of um, this dial or yeah you can change it via the app um, you can do your firmware updates via the app um, there's quite a couple of things that you can do with the app uh, maybe there's probably some videos there or i'll do a video just see what the app has because it has um, it is loaded let me put it that way so guys the last things are um, i have tested this gimbal with um, the fujifilm xt3 using the 35 millimeter lens fuji lens 56 millimeter viltrox lens um 90 millimeter uh what do you call it fujifilm lens and also the 16 millimeter fujifilm lens and on all those lenses i didn't have an issue um like i said the 90 mil is the one that i just tested um the the uh, just the till the pen because i was actually shooting um a gig so i didn't have a lot of uh or lot of time to actually play with it but it was working without an issue so on the next videos i'm going to talk about the raven eye separately i'm going to talk about the follow focus motor separately and i might also make a video about um, the app itself we will see how it goes so guys um i think the combo is a is a, is a bang for your buck um if your needs are bigger so you're using bigger cinema cameras or you think in future you will need that then just go for the uh, ronin rs2 instead of this one but myself i'm very happy with this one and depending on what the future holds i might go on to the rs2 shoot my uh my, my my shooting rig or camera change to a bigger camera please subscribe to my channel and i'm out of here Peace be with you.